If the Shroud of Turin truly is the burial cloth of Christ, it should have started here, a tomb in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, a holy place to the world's three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. A holy city, but its vastly different religions have caused conflict for centuries. Nebi Samuel called the Hill of Joy by the Crusaders because it gave them their first view of Jerusalem. It is this city which produced the greatest sign of peace and love the world could ever witness, a burial cloth known today as the Shroud of Turin. the Cathedral of Turin in Italy, home of the Shroud since 1578. It is in this chapel of the cathedral where the shroud is kept, a linen cloth approximately 14 feet long and 3 feet wide, bearing the image of a crucified man thought to be Jesus Christ. The study of the cloth by scientists around the world has revealed startling details of the cloth's history as well as the death of one whose image has been burned into the fibers. Samples lifted from the cloth by mylar tape have been carefully studied under the microscope. A wound in the side of the chest undoubtedly caused by a lance. A fiber from the lance wound area magnified over 1,000 times, showing red particles, which are blood cells directly from the heart. The hands and wrist showing another wound from a nail. A fiber from that wound shows blood cells at different stages of deterioration. From an area immediately across from the tips of the fingers, an entire particle field may be observed. These particles are blood cells which have been moved from their original location by continual folding of the cloth. The knees. Magnification shows the fibers to be encrusted by blood cells, indicating an injury probably due to a fall The dorsal image, showing the full back of the man to have been brutally whipped from the shoulders to the feet. At the back of the head, a typical first century Jewish hairstyle for men can be observed in the gathering of the hair which was tied. The blood stains surrounding and crossing the head indicate a full cap of thorns rather than a single wreath encircling the head. 
Sample IBF from the head area contained human hair, which is magnified here over 400 times. The upper back was scourged the worst. So brutal was the whipping that not only flesh, but even muscle was fragmented and torn in strips. Mylar tape sample 3BB from the back contained a small piece of muscle. Clusters of blood cells around fibers and large particles of calcium or limestone from the bench on which the body was laid in the tomb. The back of the legs and the bloody impression of the sole of one foot. From the area of the feet, the mylar tape showed its highest concentration of calcium, meaning simply that the man's feet were dirty from the walk to his crucifixion. We see through photography and optics more clearly than any generation before us. The image on cloth viewed at the left acts as a negative to form a positive likeness at the right. From the detail of the body to the most hidden secrets revealed by the microscope, we have come to know this man and his agony. While it is now kept in Turin, the origin of the shroud is the Near East, a different culture where in some instances time has not changed. A shepherd who leads his sheep, unlike cultures which drive them separating chaff from grain, flowers of the field, themes especially dear to Christians. It was here that we decided to conduct our tests, not in the sterile speculation of the laboratory or far removed in northern Italy, but in the very setting which produced the shroud to fully document for the first time all the environmental conditions previously neglected in scientific research and to attempt to provide information for future investigation. The site which would reduplicate conditions as closely as possible is a large tomb located on the grounds of the Ecole Biblique, the Dominican Monastery and School. The property adjoins that of the garden tomb and is also located within the same rock shelf as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a short distance away, thereby including two traditional sites for the location of Christ's tomb. The Ecole Biblique would house our research for two weeks while four image experiments were conducted and environmental conditions recorded. A ten-member staff from the United States and Australia included archaeologists Sister Damien, formerly Dr. Eugenia Natowski, coordinator for the team, Dr. James Strange, Dean of the University of South Florida, and Dr. Donald Wimmer of Seton Hall. Our nurse was Sister Mary Joseph, Carl Natowski, Videotape, Rex Morgan, author and editor of Shroud Publications, director of the Corpus Christi Holy Shroud Memorial, Roger and Constance Apple, directors of the Albany Center for the Turin Shroud, and Lynn Johnson, professional photographer. The tomb which was used is a large, multi-chambered structure dating from about the 8th century BC. Its separate chambers allowed different tests to be performed simultaneously without interference. For example, in this chamber, the burial shelf or bench was used for the main image experiment. While these chambers were used, 
as a control to monitor the tomb's atmospheric temperature and humidity, as well as the temperature and humidity of the stone itself. Here the effects of the alkaline limestone is observed on blood-soaked linen, allowing for linens of different degrees of processing and variation in exposure time. Moisture saturation rates of linens on the continually wet limestone surface with variables. Moisture saturation rates of linens suspended without contact against the limestone. Three times a day, all the stations were monitored, recorded, and integrated with the other tests. Okay, start. Yeah, Central to all research were four image experiments which used a specially constructed medical mannequin by Simulades Incorporated of Woodstock, New York. The mannequin could replicate the body's temperature and surface skin conditions. For each test, the hollow mannequin was filled with hot water which would simulate the body's temperature at death. The trauma endured by Christ from the agony in the garden to his crucifixion would have caused the body's temperature to rise to a point near 108 degrees Fahrenheit, a level at which heat stroke was induced. Researchers have found that after death, especially a violent one, the body's temperature does not begin to cool immediately, but may actually rise from 1 to 11 degrees. It was this factor, the body's temperature, which had been left out of all other attempts by scientists to produce an image on cloth. After the mannequin was filled with hot water, its surface temperature was monitored until it reached the correct level. Solutions of blood and an artificially prepared, chemically balanced perspiration mixture were sprayed over the entire mannequin. The team then carried the mannequin to the tomb chamber where a 14-foot linen cloth was laying on the bench ready to receive the body. <coughs> because some researchers believed that coins over the eyes could be observed on the shroud, a coin was placed over one eye of the mannequin, leaving the other eye blank for comparative purposes. Linen was then covered over the mannequin, and the tomb was sealed. The test was allowed to proceed for the length of time it took for the body to cool, from 20 to 36 hours. Then when the tomb was opened, with temperatures and humidity being recorded, the mannequin and cloth were removed. The first test showed little. The areas of image were caused only by the staining of the cloth by blood, myrrh, and aloes. Again the experiment was conducted, this time varying the substances, because of the weather conditions in Jerusalem that April, the tomb's environmental conditions were also changing.